ahead and get everything kicked off here. So to get started, I just wanted to introduce myself briefly. My name is Tim Moran. I'm one of the telephony consultants here at Voip Supply. Um, and to go along with me today and co-host, we have um, Todd Milbrand from Sangoma, who's actually their channel manager. Um, we work very closely together here at Voip Supply with Sangoma, so we are excited to go over Sangoma SIPs and fax station today in more detail for you. Just wanted to let, make you guys aware of a few things um, as we get started. We do have a chat function available throughout the entire presentation. So in the event any questions arise, please feel free to just put them in the chat and we will answer them accordingly as we move along. For those of you who aren't really aware of VoIP Supply and what we have to offer here, um, since 2002, VoIP Supply has delivered uh, a ton of hardware across the U.S., over 125,000 customers worldwide. So we have over 60 manufacturers with 16,000 different products um, from your telephone to your headset. We have everything in between. Um, the four main pieces are listed here on, my, on your screen. Uh, the next thing that I would like to uh, touch base on is our cloud span marketplace, which is where we are able to uh, deliver nine different providers to bring you service uh, each and every day um, from hosted to on-premise. And uh, that's why we have Todd here today to go into some of their solutions um, in more detail. Uh, we'll touch briefly on fulfillment, which is going to be our provisioning and our uh, packaging programming, things along those lines. Uh, we are able to actually custom label some different things and make sure that when we actually deliver your solution to you, it is plug and play ready to go. Lastly, before we move on, just touch base on our refresh reclaim department, which is going to uh, essentially allow us to purchase back slightly or lightly used equipment. We put it through a 10-step refresh process, so we essentially give it to another customer brand new um, with a greatly lower cost, of course, to make uh, it easier for um, our end users like yourselves to uh, purchase equipment that is essentially new and um, ready to go, save you some money. Um, without further ado, I'm going to actually toss it over to Todd Milbrand, the channel manager from Sangoma one of my favorite partners to work with. Um, their solutions are absolutely top notch. And uh, go ahead, Todd. Uh, thank you for that, Tim. Um, so real quick, just uh, an overview on the agenda so you know uh, what we're gonna address here today. Uh, I'm gonna spend uh, a moment just going over who Sangoma is. Uh, for those of you on the phone that may not know who we are, uh, I'm gonna do uh, an introduction into SIP trunking and what it is. Um, you know, we're going to, as, as we go over things, I'm going to try not to use too many technical terms, um, take technical terms that we are using and explain them uh, at a very basic level. Uh, for those of you on the phone call that uh, are more technical and uh, maybe want to uh, do that deeper dive uh, once we uh, are wrapped up with uh, things at the end, you know, we'll certainly answer questions. We can also uh, set up a call between uh, you and your account manager here at VoIP Supply and myself to uh, do that deeper dive. Uh, so SIP trunking, uh, SIP stands for Session Initiation Protocol. You don't need to remember that. Um, it's uh, the signaling protocol uh, for setting up a, a voice over IP connection. It's one of many, but it's become the de facto over the years, so you're going to hear me refer to uh, SIP trunking as we go through this, and obviously we have SIP uh, right in the product name for SIP station. We're going to do a little price comparison between uh, various different options uh, out there in the marketplace, uh, comparing how our SIP trunking uh, looks when uh, you compare it to having analog lines or uh, a T1 or in any of the uh, legacy stuff that's still out there. Uh, we're going to do an overview on, on some highlights on what makes us different. Uh, not only compared to uh, those legacy providers, but uh, also other SIP trunking or VoIP service providers in the marketplace. Uh, we're going to touch on some things to consider uh, from a technical standpoint. And then we're going to go into Fax Station, which is a solution we developed uh, to ensure 100% reliability over fax. We'll wrap it up with a Q&A 
Uh, with that being said, though, uh, you know, we've got people manning the uh, chat portion of this. Uh, so if you look uh, within the interface, you can, uh, you'll see some chat bubbles where you can actually go ahead and ask us questions. Uh, and periodically, I'm going to stop and uh, check with other members on the team to what we have as far as questions and get those addressed for you. Uh, so with that being said, let's get started. Uh, 30 seconds on who we are. Uh, Syngoma, uh, we've been around over 30 years now. Uh, we're publicly traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Uh, the only thing we do is telecom and telephony related products. Uh, when we got started back in uh, 1984, uh, we were making cards that would go into computers or servers uh, to allow you to interface with phone lines or with uh, analog devices such as a telephone or even a fax machine. And uh, that product portfolio uh, over the last 30 years has evolved um, up until, you know, the last decade, decade and a half. We were mainly focused on these cards, um, but we had already started to see the writing on the wall as far as where the market was going. People were moving away from analog devices, moving away from having analog phone service, and moving towards uh, IP-based communications. Um, and so in the last decade and a half, we've added things like session border controllers, uh, which we're not going to get into uh, in here. We're focused on substation and fax station. Uh, but session border controller is a device that goes behind your firewall to protect your phone system and to protect your network anytime you're using some sort of real-time communication uh, like voice over IP or even video. Um, to, to further protect you uh, from various threats that are out there. We've also developed our own phone system, uh, which our SIP service works flawlessly with. I mean, the setup, you know, I'll show you and explain some things here in a moment. Is literally, uh, you sign up for service, you copy something to a, uh, your clipboard, and you go into your phone system and it sets everything up for you. Uh, and then we also have our phones as well as uh, all of our cloud services, um, including our phone system in the cloud, uh, PB Exact, UCC. Uh, we're going to be focused today on SIP station and fax station. Um, and let's start with the SIP station portion. What's a PBX? Uh, a PBX is something that goes on your, uh, in your office, you know, sometimes, uh, it can be elsewhere, it can be in the cloud, but, but typically uh, it's always been at somebody's site. And coming into it have been phone lines from Verizon, AT&T, whoever. Uh, sometimes those are T1 lines. And the phone system goes ahead and routes uh, phone calls that come in uh, based on a ton of different factors, based on things you select in an auto attendant, based on the number you dialed. Uh, and, and that's been the, the way of the world since phone systems really came into their own and started being used uh, ubiquitously uh, in the 80s. Uh, in the last uh, 15 years or so, uh, we've started to see uh, the market push towards uh, SIP trunks, replacing those analog lines and those T1 lines coming into the PBX. Initially, it, it was due to cost, right? People wanted to save money. Um, especially, you know, early 2000s, people people forget you had to, to pay for phone service and then you had to pay for uh, long distance. You know, that's kind of a foreign to us now. Um, but that, that was the initial push and what was driving people was, oh, I can save money. It didn't always work out, especially back then. People didn't have the fastest Internet connections to support it. Um, luckily now we have bandwidth is ubiquitous everywhere. It's, it's hard not to get uh, really good download speeds uh, and even upload speeds. Uh, and making that switch not only can still get you the cost savings uh, that we were looking at 10, 15 years ago, um, but it can also, believe it or not, get you a better sounding phone call. Um, IP um, is able to carry uh, more of the uh, spectrum that uh, humans can hear than an analog line can. Um, gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, as you'll see when we go through some stuff, you can have failover um, so that if for some reason a phone call can't be delivered to your PBX, that phone call can go elsewhere to another PBX, to another phone number, 
uh, to sell them. That's not something you can very easily do with the old PSPN or uh, analog network. So just a quick recap on all of our offerings. We can do A to Z, so everything from providing you with dial tone and being your your phone company uh, over the internet with a SIP trunk or a VoIP trunk into one of our phone systems. It doesn't have to be our phone system. We'd love it if it is, uh, but it can be another provider's uh, phone system. And then uh, all the way to the desk where it would ideally be a Sangoma phone. Um, one of the nice things with our phone system, we support 300 different endpoints from different manufacturers. So if you think somebody does it better, you like uh, that somebody has a round button versus our rectangular button, what have you, uh, you've got choice there. We, we can be, again, everything from A to Z or just different pieces of it. So let's take a look at how we stack up, you know, with some of these legacy services as, as it relates to price. So I'm going to go with a, a typical SMB here. And if you're still using AT&T, Verizon, you know, this $50 a month uh, might be low in some parts of the area that might be a little, some areas of the country that might be a little high. Um, that's about a, about a good average. And an eight to 10 person small to medium business uh, to support eight to 10 folks is gonna need about three phone lines. And that's gonna run you about $150. Now, you go with substation with no contract, which we'll get more into pricing and contracts uh, in a couple of slides, but you go with us uh, to your phone system, to your free PBX, to your PB exact, uh, and you do those three lines with us, you're looking at a savings of almost 50%. You know, we're gonna get that down to $75, get that cost savings we discussed, uh, but then we're also gonna get you uh, the ancillary benefits that we discussed, better sounding calls, uh, flexibility if uh, something goes down, uh, ease of scaling things up or down. You know, so if uh, let's say you're an accounting firm and you're going into busy season, uh, so January through uh, let's say May, uh, and you wanna add some capacity, try doing that with AT&T and Verizon. Hey, we might be able to get out there in three months. Uh, with us, even if you forgot to do it, the day it starts getting busy, you can log into our website, increase the capacity, and five minutes later, the capacity is there, ready to be used. Another scenario, uh, a little bit bigger, a uh, 50-person uh, business. Typically, those folks, uh, they're going to go with a T1, which is just a bunch of phone lines banded together. Uh, it usually works out to about 23 phone, you know, 23 phone lines all banded together. Um, and typically, someone of that size is only going to need 10 uh, lines coming in. Uh, but when you start to price things out, it actually works out to be cheaper to go with a, a T1 um, as opposed to 10 individual lines. Uh, but regardless of, of which route that company went, we look at Substation, no contracts, $24.95. Uh, for each uh, call capacity or each trunk uh, coming in, and we're going to get a 35 to almost 50% savings for that business. And then lastly, we, you know, we've been talking about flexibility, you know, things beyond just price. Um, you know, this, is, this right here is a combination of flexibility and price. Um, in this scenario, we've got uh, three uh, branches, uh, including a, a main site, and in a typical analog world, you've got to have capacity for uh, the maximum number of phone calls you can expect in each location. So in, in this particular instance, we're putting a T1 with 23 paths into the main PBX. Branch number one probably only uses one or two lines max, but you know, there's that time every month or so, they may need that third line. So you've got to pay for that every month. Same thing with branch number two. So one of, one of the things we're able to do at SIPStation is we're able to share capacity across sites. So as opposed to paying for an individual branch office to have that third line just in case, you can share the capacity between all of your locations and reduce costs even th further, really only paying for what you are using. 
So before I go any further, I just want to pause here real quick and check with the team, see if we have any questions I can uh, answer for folks. Yep, absolutely, Todd. Appreciate that. Um, we do have a question. Um, how would you estimate your ISP bandwidth requirement per call path? Uh, whether it's us or anyone else, I always recommend to use 100K up and down. Um, it's actually a, a little bit higher of a number. Um, than what is actually used, but one, it's a, it's a round number, so it's easy to do the math, uh, and two, it gives you a little bit of a buffer there. Um, and I personally would not want to go over 10% utilization um, at max. So continuing to use round numbers, if um, you have 10 megabytes up and down coming in uh, on your connection, I wouldn't want to use more than one megabyte for voice. Uh, so in that scenario, you'd be maxing out at uh, 10 phone calls all at once, to be clear. Awesome. Thank you, Todd. Appreciate that. No problem. Any other questions? Uh, not right this second. No. I think right. we are good to continue. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, I just want to touch on a couple highlights here. Um, we've been doing the pricing and the price comparison on no contract. Um, so no contract is nice. Some folks like the uh, flexibility of just feeling not tied into something. Um, so you know, in that scenario, we're looking at twenty four ninety nine a month per trunk. And when I say per trunk, what I'm referring to is capacity coming in. So think of it like the phone lines you used to have at home. Um, if you think you need four lines or you have four lines now, you're going to need four trunks or channels uh, from us. Uh, each one of those channels is going to get you 3,000 minutes per trunk. So if you were to go with four trunks, that's going to be 12,000. You go with five, that's 15,000. Uh, those are minutes that can be used throughout the U.S. and Canada. Uh, you know, like I was saying at the beginning of the call, um, you know, being charged uh, long long distance, you know, a distant memory at this point. Uh, you know, wherever you are, we, we've got local numbers for you. Um, we can even, uh, again, going back to flexibility, um, give you phone numbers in an area that you're not located. So if you're looking to expand to uh, Southern California and you happen to be located in Phoenix, you can get yourself uh, a couple of phone numbers uh, with Los Angeles uh, area codes and begin promoting yourself like that, and no one would be the wiser that you haven't opened an office yet. Um, you know, and you can use that to see what kind of response you get and give people a, a local feel, local presence there. Um, we're going to talk about contracts shortly. Um, I just want to show you a few more things, but uh, you know, you're going to see uh, the great price we already have with SIP Station. If you uh, commit to a 12-month or 36-month contract, that price is going to go down. And you're going to still get all of the features and functionality that we're talking about. There's no difference between the two. If you ever want to test this out, um, we do a free 21-day trial. So you can, uh, just to be clear on this one, you have to use free PBX or PB Exact to get the free 21-day trial. That's not something you can do with another phone system. Um, actually getting that registered and uh, doing everything you need to do to activate the 21-day trial is uh, through those phone systems. Uh, Todd, if you don't mind, I'm just nope. going to jump in real quick. Uh, we did actually just grab another question here. Sure. Um, I was hoping we could... Um, answer that before we moved on. Uh, how hard is it to port existing numbers over to SIP station is the question. Uh, it's not hard at all. Um, you know, you have to fill out, uh, whether it's us or anyone else, uh, when you're porting, uh, you have to fill out something called the letter of authorization, uh, which gives the company you're moving to permission to uh, act on your behalf with your existing carrier. Uh, so you fill that out, um, you'll need a copy of your bill. Um, which, uh, if you're me, means going digging through a bunch of mail and trying to find that bill. Um, you'll need that and the LOA. You know, if I pop that up here real quick, you'll see it's a very easy form to fill out. 
the process for porting over takes three to 30 days, depending on uh, the carrier. Um, you can see here, here's the letter of authorization. We're looking for your name, your info, the phone numbers you're porting over, and for you to sign it. It's a really easy process. Um, when porting away from anyone, uh, there will be um, anywhere from 15 minutes to one hour of downtime when the port actually does happen. Uh, so what we actually recommend, let me actually go to substation.com. We recommend when you're setting up um, everything, and everything is done through substation.com here, um, if you've got four phone numbers you're porting, pick four phone numbers today. Uh, they'll just be temporary phone numbers. Uh, they'll give you the ability to set everything up on your phone system, make sure things are routing uh, in the manner that you want them to route and behave in. You could then also, once ready, go to your existing carrier and have them forward uh, number eight, you know, number one to temporary number one, number two to temporary number two, and start running everything through that phone, so, you know, your new phone system if uh, you happen to go with us. Um, and then you'll be notified a couple of days ahead of time that the port's going to happen on this date at this time. Um, if it doesn't work for you for any specific reason, it can be rescheduled usually. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, you'll have that fifth, usually 15 minutes, but, you know, when I say 15 minutes to an hour, it's, it's usually right at that 15 minute mark, uh, but certain carriers, things do go longer, um, so that you can be prepped for that. Any other uh, questions? I think we are good, appreciate the answer. No problem. So I'm gonna show you real quick um, the sign up process. Um, you're just gonna come to station.com. Uh, every phone number you have with us is going to cost you a dollar per month. It's a dollar fifty per month and two point four cents a minute if you need an eight hundred number. Uh, selecting numbers is super simple. Um, so if I come here, I'm going to choose the great city of Buffalo, New York. I can see all of the numbers available. I can even search through those. Um, I don't have a phone with me. What would TACO be? Spelled out. T-A-C-O. Yeah. Uh, I meant uh, on a phone for advertising. So I'm going to say, you know what? I want a phone number ending in 000. There's nothing here. If I want, uh, there we go. One ending in 00, I can find all the ones that do uh, very quickly. If I take my phone, I can figure out uh, what taco spells out or, you know, whatever I may want for my business. Um, all right, so it turns out taco is uh, 8226. And we've got nothing. Oh, we've got one in Buffalo with taco. Um, so if you wanted to do something like that, you certainly could. Uh, I'm going to select that number. Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to figure out what I'm looking at as far as trunks. I'm going to go with four, because uh, that's what we've been using in some of these examples. Now, if you're wondering, well, Todd, um, what if I have a fifth phone call come in? What if I have a sixth one come in? How do I, I have no way of knowing with my existing system whether four was enough or, too, you know, if it was too much. Um, what do I do? I, I, I don't want those phone calls getting a busy signal. I don't want them getting frustrated and going to my competitor. I'm going to log in here real quick. Uh, because the answer we have to that is something called bursting. It's called concurrency bursting. And what you do is you pay per minute on those calls. So once you are uh, logged in, Come under my account here. Uh, under account summary, this is where I can scale up and down those trunks. So busy season comes from my accounting firm and I want to go up to 10, I can do that. If I go to account configuration here, here's concurrency bursting. 
And you probably notice we have these little question marks everywhere. And if I hover over them, it'll, it'll tell me what these things do. Um, you always have access to, uh, to us, to uh, Tim and the other folks here at Boyd Supply to answer questions. But um, you know, do know that these are here, hopefully, to, uh, to help guide you. Um, so with concurrency bursting, any phone calls that come in beyond the capacity you currently have will be charged at 1.9 cents a minute for inbound, 2.9 cents a minute for outbound, and uh, I believe it's 3.9 3 .9 cents a minute if it's Canadian. And what you do is you prepay that to us. So, you know, you can go as low as $5, and whatever you use over the course of that month will come out of that $5. Um, if you need more, um, it will autom you can set things up so it'll automatically chart, you know, pre-charge you another $5. And if you see a lot of that getting hit, then you know, okay, I'm going to just put this up to five. You know, I'm getting enough calls that, uh, you know, it makes sense. And from a financial perspective, I'm just going to move this up to five or six or whatever you think it needs to be. Any uh, additional questions come in yet? Uh, currently, no. We are in no. great shape. All right. You guys have any questions? Feel free to ask away. Uh, again, it's within the uh, um, within the screen share. You see the little chat bubbles that look like every other little chat bubble. Feel free to ask away. All right. So I mentioned at the beginning how super easy it is to set this up with our phone system. You know, I'm not going to actually show that setup uh, just due to time constraints and not having access to a, a phone system at this moment. But once you go through all this, once you go through that initial part I was showing you, you put in your credit card, um, you're going to grab this module key code. It says free PBX here, but it's also uh, for PB exact. You copy this, and you're going to paste this into the SIP station module within your phone system. Um, once you have done that, it's going to build everything out. You don't need to get weird IP addresses or URLs and find out things with port numbers and all the other stuff uh, you've got with other providers. You copy it, you paste it. Not only does it set up the trunks and the registration so you can start making and receiving phone calls, uh, but it also imports all of your phone numbers and all the other relevant stuff you would need in that setup. Now, if uh, you're not using our phone system just yet, you uh, still have somebody else, you can grab that stuff here with the SIP username and SIP password. And, you know, we can certainly uh, assist as best as we can to get that stuff set up for you uh, with that other manufacturer's phone system. Under here is also, when we're talking about the failover. If I want to just fail over everything to a particular phone number, I can do that. I can fail it over to the uh, IP address of a, a backup phone system I may have elsewhere. I can even do what's called a per DID failover. So DID stands for direct inward dial. It just means that when you call me, the call goes through the phone system, but it avoids the auto attendant, the IVR, all that other stuff, and just goes straight to my extension. So you can set on a per DID failover if for whatever reason we weren't able to deliver dial tone to the phone system, anyone who has a direct dial, it'll go to their cell phone or to their home phone or wherever you want it to go. Uh, so again, all that, that flexibility we were talking about uh, earlier in, in conjunction with the price savings. So speaking of price savings, I'm gonna pop back here into uh, PowerPoint. We've been talking $24.99 a month. Uh, well, starting October 1st, um, we are going to start offering contracts for the first time. Um, as part of doing that, uh, there will be some discounts uh, available. Um, you know, one of the things I hear uh, occasionally from, from folks is, I want a contract because I don't want the price to change. Um, you know, price actually has never changed, but, you know, when, when you sign that contract, you get that guarantee, and a lot of people uh, feel comfortable with that. And not only are they going to get a, a locked-in rate, they're going to get discounts. 
you can see here on a one month contract, you're going to go down to $21.99 per trunk. Everything else we've talked about has stayed the same. There's no other discounts, it's just uh, on the uh, channel or trunk side. Um, it's a minimum of three trunks. Um, so you can't do a one month contract on, um, on one trunk or two. It's got to be a minimum of three. Uh, if you sign up for three and six months in, you need additional capacity, you go up to five. That doesn't do anything to your contract length. It's still going to be another six months. Um, if you start at five and you need to go down, you certainly can go down, but because you're under contract, it's not going to be able to go below three. And if you go with a 36 month contract with us, um, everything is above. Again, no features, functionality, nothing lost, uh, same flexibility. Uh, but you're going to be able to lock that in at $17.99 per trunk. So any questions? We do have a quick question. Um, somebody was interested in, what, in knowing if they were to sign up for the month-to-month -month trunk today um, to see what the service is all about and come to love it, are they able to then sign a contract uh, down the road and get that discount? Absolutely. I mean, you can go as far as the 21-day free trial to month to month under no contract to uh, contract if you want. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Any other uh, questions as it relates to the contracts or pricing or just anything we've uh, uncovered so far? As of right now, it looks like we've answered all the questions that are in the chat. Awesome. So we are good. So I just want to talk a little bit about uh, considerations uh, when moving to step trunking. Um, you know, we already had that great question earlier about uh, what we'd be looking at bandwidth-wise. And, uh, you know, for the most part, in the majority of the, the U.S. and even just here in North America, um, that concern of do I have enough bandwidth, um, it's kind of going away. You know, band, bandwidth is plentiful, it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. Um, you know, I've I've got a 150 up and down at home. That is beyond anything I need. Uh, it's beyond what most businesses need. Um, but uh, lucky for us, that's um, you know the way providers are, are trying to compete in the marketplace. Um, they just keep giving us more and more, uh, which means we have less and less to worry about when it comes to. Uh, you know, the bandwidth requirements for IP communications. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, your local network, let me refer to the local area network, LAN right here. So local area network, that's internal, that's everything within, inside your walls at your business. Uh, WAN, wide area network, this would be everything outside the walls from your uh, service provider. Uh, LAN is just as important. Um, having capacity on, on your LAN, um, sometimes doing uh, quality of service and other things to uh, to ensure call quality are needed. And uh, fortunately for you guys, you guys have a, a great group of guys here at Voice Supply that you're working with uh, that can guide you on that and take a look at uh, what you currently have and certainly make suggestions on uh, what you may need going forward. Um, you know, so that is something you certainly need to uh, take a look at. Just because you have 100 up and down from uh, your cable provider, uh, doesn't mean you're not going to run into a bottleneck uh, once it gets within within your walls. Um, what's more important now um, to address is something called latency and jitter. And, and really what that means is how long it takes uh, a packet to get to you. Um, with cable modems, uh, with fiber, um, it's not really much of a concern at all. Um, what, what we do see and what we have run into is uh, DSL um, is still a, a pretty popular technology uh, in certain pockets in the United States uh, and Canada as well. And DSL uh, is able to provide some pretty good speeds, you know, 50, 20, 50, 50, you know, depending on, on various items. Uh, but it's inherently uh, a high latency um, solution. So even though you may have really, really good bandwidth, um, 
latency and, and jitter inherent to the type of service you have is just a recipe for not getting good quality phone service, not just from us, but from any IP-based uh, provider. Um, so I've got a link here. I mean, you can look up, you know, VoIP speed test, latency and jitter speed test. Um, you know, if, uh, if you're not too sure, even with a cable modem, that is something you may want to take a look at. I actually do have a, a quick question here, Todd. Um, just before we, we dig in a little bit deeper, I just wanted to confirm, um, how does the call, quality of calls compare to other SIP providers who use a private network and can implement QoS? Um, how can SIP station maintain high quality over the open internet? That is a, a great question. Um, you know, us like uh, uh, any other, uh, what you would call over the top provider, um, you know, there's not a lot we can do to fully ensure um, once it hits the open internet, uh, any type of quality of service. Um, you know, providers that uh, are providing it on their own network um, and can control the network um, are able to do those uh, quality of service type things um, that we just can't. Um, typically, um, you are going to pay more to uh, have a service like that. Uh, and then going back to what I was mentioning with bandwidth being ubiquitous, um, you know, even four years ago, um, you know, I remember Netflix, you know, taking a minute or two to kind of get going with the stream. Um, you know, I think most people on this call would throw their remote if it took more than two seconds now. Um, you know, so, so congestion and Quality of service as it relates to going over the public internet has become less and less of a concern. Uh, but for those that uh, it is a concern, that's why we have um, a free trial. That's why we have no contracts. Um, you know, so you can test those things out and see if it'll work for you. Um, and one other uh, point I want to uh, make, um, just based on our backbone, we, we do have a, uh, about 10,000 points of presence across the United States, which, which does help minimize how far things are going over the uh, open internet. Um, they're going to one of our points of presence uh, and then going on our backbone to our salute, to our data centers. Perfect. Any other Thank questions? You. Not right now. Thank you so much. All right. So feel free. Um, uh, we're going to move this party over to uh, to fax. Uh, but if you want to talk about SIP station, uh, we'll have a Q&A again at the end. And like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we can always set something up more personalized uh, if needed. So let's talk uh, about fax machines. You know, these uh, this is the technology that won't die, right? Like flip phones, like died pretty quickly. You know, other things have come along. Um, you know, you would think between email and other forms of communication we have now that the fax machine would, um, you know, it'd be, it'd be like in that movie uh, Office Space. Everyone would just take out the fax machine, um, you know, take their frustrations out on it. Uh, but that's not the case. It's not going anywhere. Um, you know, if you, if you want fax to work, um, Option number one, regular phone lines from AT&T, Verizon, Windstream, whoever, um, works 100%. Uh, fax machines were made to work on that network. Um, only issue we have there is the price on that network is going up. Um, they don't want devices on that network. Um, they want to divest themselves of it. They don't want to put more money and effort into um, 100 plus year old technology. Um, so they're not investing in the network and to discourage people, they keep increasing the pricing. Well, what about SIP trunks? You know, uh, we just talked about SIP trunks. Um, we do support something called T.38 within our SIP trunks. Um, there are fa you know fax machines. Uh, any new fax machine you get is going to support T.38. Um, you know why why would we uh, stay away from that? Well, in my experience, um, 
any time you have something uh, analog, uh, like a fax machine, uh, going over a digital network between the conversion and between the way uh, networks um, are set up to, to behave, um, it, it's a recipe for I only got two pages out of my six. Um, so for example, this, this phone call, um, any YouTube video you watch, whatever you do on the internet, um, packets get dropped and resent. Packets show up in different orders. Um, you know, the way our brains work on this phone call, there's, there's packets dropping constantly, and uh, your brain's able to just stitch it together. You, you don't even realize it. Um, a fax machine is a lot more temperamental and does not have the ability of our brains to stitch that stuff together. So when a packet gets missed, a packet gets dropped, it comes in the wrong order, you have uh, people complaining about only getting two out of six pages, three out of six pages. Um, so there's a lot of compatibility issues. There's a lot of um, issues with the, the conversion from digital to analog. Um, and more importantly, just an IP-based network, if fax machines were made for analog, not, uh, not IP. So what about the, the cable company, right? You know, cable company is always uh, um, doing advertisements on radio and elsewhere. You know, you can get phone service from them. And you look at it, you can, you can plug your old phone line into it. So, so it must be analog, right? It must be 100%, just like uh, uh, that first example we gave, uh, of regular old phone service. Not really. Um, so first of all, that cable modem, it's still going to be voice over IP, providing that signaling all the way to the cable modem. You then have a, a digital to analog conversion and then it goes to your fax machine. So all of the issues that we just talked about with SIP trunking and T38 as it relates to fax are going to happen as well with cable modems. Because those tones that the fax, the fax uh, machines depend upon are still going to go over an IP network, which means showing up in the wrong place at the wrong time, in the wrong order, being dropped, et cetera, et cetera. Well, What's, what's another option we have? Well, this is one. This one's a one that actually does work 100%, um, just like uh, what we see with the, the regular PSTN, and that, that's eFax. Um, the only issue as it relates to uh, eFax is you can't keep your fax machine. You've got to send everything from Outlook or Gmail, or you know, sometimes there's a, a special client you have to download. Sometimes there's a portal. Uh, it's all different. You know, if you've got non-technical users or uh, people that uh, only use the, the fax uh, occasionally, um, you know, there's there's a steep learning curve there. Um, so e-fax is an option, but if you need that fax machine, which uh, most people that uh, are doing fax still do, uh, e-fax isn't going to work for you. So what's the what's the solution? What have I been getting at to with the uh, with these slides? Uh, fax station from Sangoma, we we can solve all of that. Um, you can use your fax machine and or an e-fax portal uh, at the same time, uh, which is nice because if you have some folks that want to continue to use the fax machine, they can. Others can log into the portal and do the e-fax. Um, since all of that stuff is cloud-based, if uh, you missed a fax from someone or someone says, hey, I sent you a fax, uh, you know, last week, I sent you a purchase order. Um, did you ship it? Well, no, I didn't get it. Let me log into the portal and see. Or somebody says they didn't get your purchase order. You don't want to go over to the fax machine and uh, or print all that out and do it again. Uh, you can actually log into the portal and send that fax you originally sent with paper through the fax machine, again, right from your computer. All that stuff we talked about with jitter, bandwidth, conversion, packets being dropped, uh, doesn't matter with our solution. 
And the reason it doesn't matter, we, we actually developed this originally um, for oil companies. Uh, rigs out in the ocean, that are, their only connection back to home base was a, a satellite connection. Um, they wanted to be able to send faxes. Um, so that's why we developed it. And what we developed was an appliance that goes on site, it plugs into your internet connection, and then each appliance can plug into four fax machines. And the appliance will act as a fax machine. So for example, if I'm sending a fax to Tim over here, I go to my fax machine, I put my pages in, I put in my phone number, and it gets transmitted to this box. And my fax machine thinks it already communicated with the uh, on the other end, uh, the fax, uh, fax machine over there, um, and goes on with its business. The fax station appliance, once it has all of those pages, is going to securely transfer that to our data center. And our data center is then going to send it over the PSTN, those lines we talked about in scenario one that are 100% to the fax machine it actually needs to go to. And somebody sending me a fax, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to go in reverse, where it's going to come here over the PSTN to our data center. Once it's fully in our data center, we will then transmit it over the internet to the fax station appliance. So no matter how slow this internet connection is, you know, once it is there, it will then send it to the fax machine connecting up to it again as if it were a fax machine talking to a fax machine, thus ensuring 100% reliability. So what does it look like pricing on that? If we go back to SIP station here, I'm going to log out. This is also where I can go ahead and order fax station service. I come down here and I choose. High volume faxing is 3,000 pages. Low volume is 150. I choose the one I need. I add a fax device if I'm actually going to uh, use this by hooking up a fax machine. And I check out and my device shows up uh, however many days later, already pre-configured, ready for me to just plug into the internet and plug into my fax machine. Any questions on fax station? Doesn't appear that there is. Uh, we did have a question about there being hardware associated with it, but uh, obviously you got right to that. Um, other than that, we are good on fax station, it looks like. Um, any questions on SIP station in general on San Gilma? Guys, are there any last minute questions that uh, you'd like answered before we kind of get things wrapped up here? Please just put them in the chat box. We'll get right to them. So while we're uh, waiting for um, those questions to come in, I'm going to show some folks the portal. I'm going to log into my personal one here. And from here, if I wanted to send a fax, I certainly can. And I can also see any faxes I've received as well. If I wanted to resend this one, I can do that right from here like we were talking about. I can even email it to myself as well. I'm gonna Tim, do we have any uh, questions? Uh, yes, we do. So um, we have a question that uh, indicates the $190 per month is a one-time fee for the hardware, then 24 per month for the fax option, which is the high volume fax. Correct. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, the $190 is a one-time fee just for the box itself, for the fax station box. Um, and then you are correct. If you were to go with the high volume faxing, it would be a, a monthly recurring charge of 24 per month. 
And, and that fax device, just to reiterate, connects up to four machines. Um, and you can have, um, with those four machines, more than four phone numbers. You can have ten phone numbers, uh, and you can choose that maybe six of them go straight to somebody's email. They don't even go to a fax machine. Um, you can actually control all of that right through here uh, within the, uh, the portal. Uh, we do actually have a, another question that just came in. What if we exceed the number of faxes per month? That's a great question. Um, so we give you a little bit of a, a buffer. You know, so if, if, let's say there's two days left in the month and you're at 2,900. You know, as long as you don't go significantly over 3,000, that's fine. Um, if we're five days into the month and you're at 2,900, we're going to reach out to you and let you know that you need to add another trunk. So you can have one fax machine hooked up to one fax box of, or you know one of our uh, fax station appliances, but if you if you're doing 12,000 pages on that one fax machine, you're going to need four of these. And if you go to sangoma.com/legal I believe it's one cent per page uh, when you go over. It's going to be under the SIP station uh, service rates. Maybe not. I'll get it so when we send out uh, the slides for this, I'll make sure you guys have the uh, uh, correct rate debt for that uh, to provide people. Any other uh, questions come in? It looks like we've answered uh, everything that's come in thus far. Um, really appreciate Todd going over all that information. Uh, we do know it's a lot, so just some last minute recommended next steps for you. Um, we will actually, uh, some people had asked in the chat box during the presentation if there would be a recording because they either had to jump out early or um, missed a little bit of the beginning. We will be sending out a recording of the uh, webinar for your own viewing pleasure and to, of course, recap any information that uh, you may have missed. Um, with that being said, always the, the next best step is, of course, to get in touch with some of our telephony experts here at Voice Supply. Um, like myself and the team here, um, we will be able to, you know, answer any questions, um, ask some questions, learn a little bit more about your business, and of course, uh, dive a little bit deeper into uh, the SIP station, fax station, and how that's going to help you guys moving forward. Um, what we do in these situations, of course, is going to essentially be to create an onboarding game plan um, with you, determine your timelines and needs and then get with Todd and Sangoma, who are always available and great to work with um, on a phone call with you to, again, you know, dive in, make sure that we are dotting those I's, crossing the T's, and making sure we're delivering a customized solution that's going to work um, for your individual business needs and what you need to uh, efficiently run your business day to day. Um, I did miss a slide earlier. I apologize. I had some technical difficulties. But uh, as always, we would always encourage you to visit VoIPSupply.com. Um, that's where you're going to really be able to see that we are that one-stop shop for whether it's hardware, um, service. We work with multiple providers to really, again, customize that solution. It's not a one-size-fits-all usually. Um, each business does have unique needs that we can meet, and uh, that's why we encourage you to come directly to the source where we can, of course, um, learn what you need and place you accordingly to that solution. Um, and then, of course, last steps. I know we did touch base on pricing um, and things along those lines, but once we go through all of those different things and steps accordingly, we'll end up, uh, of course, being able to provide a more detailed proposal and pricing. Um, as Todd said, our goal is essentially to make everything as simplistic as possible for you. Um, you know, we do we know that we are the experts. We want to walk you down the path to navigate you toward the solution that you're looking for. And if you don't know what that solution is today, that's okay. We are here to find it for you and ultimately save you money in the making as well. Um, again, just wanted to thank you all for joining. 
Um, if there are any last minute questions, we are happy to take them. One thing I just want to add, uh, I said one cent per page on uh, the overage, it's actually five cents. And uh, under stangoma.com slash legal, um, all the stuff on that uh, related to fax station is under the SIP station terms of service, not the uh, rate deck. My apologies on that. All right, everybody. Thank you again so much for joining us today. We really do appreciate it. Um, expect some, some follow-up from VoIP Supply just so we can uh, touch base with you, get some feedback, and, of course, help you navigate toward that solution. Um, again, thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day, and uh, we will be in touch. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.